Duffing a wedge is a huge problem for a lot of golfers and in this video, I'm gonna fix that for you. Before we get stuck into it though, guys, let's hit that subscribe button down there if you want me to be your free golf coach, tech advice, any swing advice you need, Matt Fry's your golf coach, just down there. Let's get stuck in. So one of the problems that a lot of students come to me with is that they stand on a golf course, they've hit a fantastic drive down the middle of the fairway, but then they get into that 100 yard zone and we're left with that tricky half swing or even a three quarter swing or a quarter swing and we end up duffing it. We get the thins, we get the fats and there's a lot of guessing as we stand over those shots and we don't really know what to do. But today I'm gonna to give you a real easy system that you can use and you can do this with your pitching wedge, your gap wedge, your sand wedge, lob wedge, whatever it may be that you're using to hit those pitching shots with to help you actually start to master those half swings and three quarter swings. So let's take a look at it. So the big problem that I see from a lot of people, like I say, is that duff problem, because as I would stand now, and I have maybe a 60 yard shot, and I'm gonna use my 54 degree, the problem is that people don't actually know how far they should be swinging and at what tempo they should be swinging. So if you were stood to the ball, you stand there thinking, oh, I don't wanna fat it, I don't wanna duff it. And a lot of what you're trying to do actually is figure it out during the golf swing. So you maybe create your normal full golf swing, but then your brain thinks, well, that target's quite close to us. We need to slow down. So on the downswing now, I put the brakes on, which leads me not committing to my strike. And ultimately I start to get the ground before the golf ball, or I end up bouncing up off that and getting those thins and those duffs, all because I'm trying to figure it out as I'm going is where if we watch the pros on television, we don't see them get 60 yards from a green, make a full swing and then sort of look hesitant on the way down and guess what they're doing. They maybe make a shorter one. They have points that they swing to throughout their swing that allows them to judge their distance. And there's three points that I use that I think if you guys start to harness these and practice these, these pitch shots will be dead easy. Now there's two ways to think about it. The real simple one would be the three point one that I would use, or you could get more complex and have more and more points throughout the system, which I will explain shortly. But the first one that I like to talk to my students about is all about where I feel my hands are swinging in the backswing. And then I try and match that up through in the follow through. So let's say, Point one for me, as I get my 54 degree here, would be that I try and feel that my hands swing relative to my belt line. So round about my waistline here, I try and get my hands somewhere around there. Then as I would follow through, I try and feel that they're going maybe similar to the belt line, maybe a little bit on because I'm carrying a bit of speed as I'm going through. What I don't do is try and swing all the way up and then think, oh, stop and try and cut it off too quickly as I go through. And as I hit this one here, my normal 54 would go 105 yards, but with just a belt to belt swing, I pop that one out there. It's a lovely crisp strike because I know where I want to go and I've got a 52 yard carry. So what that now allows me to do is when I get into that 52 yard motion or sorry, that 52 yardage, I'm able to actually think, well, that's a belt to belt swing. And what you want to do here from the angle that we've got face on is you're starting to practice this. You want to get a camera straight in line with your hair. And the big thing about this is you might think you're going belt to belt and it might actually be more stomach to stomach. But as long as you've got some form of characteristic in your mind as to where you're actually swinging, that's okay. Your second piece of the puzzle is getting something like a launch monitor or you can do it another way, which I'll tell you in a moment about. But if you can start to gauge how far you're swinging and how far the ball is carrying, you're then able to actually start to get some consistency in what you're hitting. Because again, if I go same setup and try and now feel that I go belt to belt with the same tempo, a little bit heavier that one, so I'm not expecting it to carry as much. Perfect, 49 yards on that one as I've gone through it. Like I say, a little bit heavy, but for three yards, 
just by me actually swinging from a point to point, I now know I can start to judge these distances so I'm not guessing it. From there then, I would then use my hands to maybe go up a little bit further. And my next point for me would be that I feel that I'm swinging round my chest somewhere. So we know that this goes 105 full out. I've got 52 at this point. I would imagine that I'm probably gonna see this go about 65 yards as I go through. So again, utilizing a camera angle, if you've got your friend either stood with a camera square on, you can at least see where you're swinging to and then swinging through to, you can start to put some numbers to where these swings are going. So here, again, pretty much the same setup. I feel that I'm now gonna go chest. We can see a little bit more hinge in the wrist here now. And as I would go through, I try and feel that I follow it through to a pretty much similar distance as I go through. Like I say, I would probably expect to see this fly about 65 yards. And a nice strike, it's gone out that little bit further, ooh, 62 yards. So I'm not too far away there. And what I'm doing is just starting to trust my tempo and start to trust that length of swing that I'm getting. Because like I said earlier in the start of the video, the biggest problem I see is that as you stood over it, even without reading your mind, you can start to think, well, that guy doesn't look comfortable there because he doesn't know how far he hits his sand wedge, even on a full swing. So how is he going to try and judge it when he's actually making a half swing? He's probably not. So just by doing this and starting to get used to the tempo, which is a big thing, and you'll probably notice as I'm making these swings, I don't look like I'm rushing them. I'm just making nice, smooth swings to some controlled points throughout my system. So... Again, hands to my chest, hands to my chest. It felt pretty nice, it felt very similar. And is it gonna be the same number? Ooh, not far, 64 yards. So all of a sudden, I'm starting to get these two yard gaps just by actually finding some points in my swing and starting to get that, uh, that tempo under control. My third and final one for this one would be what I call my shoulder swing. So. Real simple, we've had hip or belt line, waistline, whatever you want to call it. We've had chest line, then we get up to the shoulder line. And as we're going through these, I'm starting to see about 15 yards distance between all of them. So I would expect this to roughly fly about 80 yards now. So again, utilizing that camera angle, you can start to see and measure how far you're actually hitting it by just recording yourself and seeing how far you actually swing to. So same tempo, same setup. Let's feel that I go up to my shoulder and I go a little bit further on it. And I should feel that that goes round about 80 yards. Felt nice, looked good. Not bad, 81 yards for that one. So all of a sudden, those half shots, like I say, guessing's the biggest problem that we see over there because you don't have an idea of what you're actually meant to be doing. So you stand over there trying to figure it out throughout your golf swing that it's only about one and a half seconds long. And because it's a shorter swing as well, you've not got much time to actually correct any problems you've made. You start to get those poor contacts. As we're here, Knowing how far I want to swing, I'm going to swing it to my shoulders, I'm going to swing it through to my shoulders, keeping that tempo pretty similar. That felt pretty good. Is it the same number? Oh, not far away, 83 yards on that one. So just a one yard window on those two, all by getting used to actually seeing some points throughout my golf swing. I did say there was another method as well. Now, this one would require you to hit a lot more balls. And what I would say is for that 3.1 3 that I've just done there, I would maybe hit 10 balls with each point. So you start with maybe your favorite wedge that's your chipping wedge. Do 10 balls to your waist, 10 balls to your chest, 10 balls to your shoulder, get an average of those carry distances. If you've not got a launch monitor as well, what you can do, if you went to the middle of where all your golf balls have fallen, you get your range finder or even simply pacing it out, 
down to where the middle of the balls are, you'll be able to get that yardage for you. It might not be exact, but just by the old school method of pacing it out will give you where those yardages are. But going to the range, going to a professional with a launch monitor will really help you just by saying, I want to do a gapping session. The second method that you could do to get used to actually doing it would be a clock system. So as I now take my setup and we have six at the bottom here and 12 up at the top, as I'm going back up towards 12 this way, we would start to see that I'm getting a lot of points throughout my golf swing. So as we look at it, I'm almost going back. I would be, I would have five o'clock, four o'clock, three o'clock, two o'clock, one o'clock, and then I get up to 12 as maybe my full golf swing. So at those, what we would maybe start to see, if I was going to each point where I felt that I was going to chip it just from five through to seven, I might only see the golf ball carry about 12 yards. And it would give you a real detailed system. And that's probably for someone who wants to be sure that they've got each distance as they're going through that one went 25 yards you'll start to get maybe about six to ten yards difference between each one so again clocks on i'm now going to go up to four and then i'm going to go through to eight and we might see it go a little bit further there probably not with that one because i toe striked it but as you're doing it it's a more detailed system and will require a little bit more input from yourself and a bit more practice to get those but i think starting out a lot of the uh, a lot of lessons that i give to my students when we go through the three point system it feels like they've got a quarter a half a three quarter and a full swing and it allows you then just to get out on the golf course and have a lot of yardages ticked off as well with that clock system you do have a lot of points throughout of it you've got six on your backswing that you're going through so it does give you, you know, a lot of yardages that you really could cover if you wanted to make sure that you weren't really nervous and having to try and feel it a little bit too much. The clock would be a good one, but if you just want to get some numbers, maybe those three baselines that I talked about earlier, that's going to help you go through any half wedge shot that you're going to feel. And what I would do once you've done it is then maybe get one wedge done, sand wedge, let's say, then maybe do it with your pitching wedge, then maybe do it with your lob wedge, and you'll notice if you just make a little chart of what you've got going on, you'll start to see that you've got loads of distances covered there. So if you've got a 40 yard shot, if you've got a 50 yard shot, if you've got a 60, 80, 90, whatever it may be, you'll have a yardage for that. The beauty of it as well, when you do it with all your wedges, you'll have different flights. So if you need a 40 yard shot that needs to run a little bit more, it could be a uh, waist to waist with your 54. As well, if you need a 40 yard shot that needs to get high and stop, it might be a chest to chest with your 60 because you're gonna pop them up a little bit more. So real easy system guys. And I think it's one, if you start to use it, just get some practice in. Like I say, launch monitors will definitely help. The camera angle is the most important bit because that's gonna give you some guidance as to where you think you're swinging, whether it's gonna be waist, chest or shoulders. At least you can then get a reference point by yourself by looking at this angle. You're gonna be able to see what's going on, but then make a note of them, practice them, and you'll start to be able to actually get those half shots. So 54 degree, I'm gonna hit this one as close as I can to 50 yards. And I know that that's a waste to waste for me. That's gotta be good. That's gotta be good. Come on, hit that 50 number. Just, just come in here, guys, just to prove that this system works. We said 50. 50.1 yards carry. So real simple system there, guys. Three points that are gonna help your golf swing and help you stop duffing those wedges. Get to it, make some charts, get practicing. Like I say, the camera angle face on is your biggest friend because you'll be able to see where you're going. And then those duff shots out on the golf course, you'll start to get rid of them. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you're hitting that subscribe button down there for loads more free golf tips. And I'll see you in your next lesson. Can't believe I've just hit 50.1. I'm actually, I'm actually gonna just hit one more because I'm so impressed with myself.
that would be nowhere near it. Oh, 51 yards, not bad.